I just filmed this whole video without sound. Okay, real quick, the sound might be weird because I have my windows open. And uh, this is a really weird kind of sensitive topic for people. So if you don't want to talk about like the existence of God, then leave. So since my brother died last June, my mom has been dealing with it in a bunch of different ways. But one thing that she's been trying to do is go to mediums. Um, for those who don't know, a medium is like a spiritual channeler who can apparently be in tune to the spirit. Okay, I don't actually know what a medium is. I'm going to look it up. A medium uses his or her psychic or intuitive abilities to see the past, present, and future events of a person by tuning into the spirit energy surrounding that person. So basically, I think of it as a medium can see ghosts. It's just easiest for me, for my tiny brain, to simplify it that way, even though I know that's not what it is. I, myself, am a skeptic. Uh, I don't know what I believe in. I don't know if I'm into the idea of, like, a being that's really big and can hold the earth with its arms. I don't know if I'm into the idea of, like, you know, uh, many different gods or goddesses or lords. I don't know. I don't know. I want it all to be real. <laughs> I love the idea of something else. I love the idea that this isn't it. Uh, I love the idea that there's spiritual energy around me. But I don't know if that's true. Okay, so my mom's been seeing these mediums, and she always asks me if I want to go, and I'm always just like, nope, not at all interested. Because when I was like 11, I saw an exorcism, and I pretty much just kind of associated it with the medium, I think. The exorcism was like super, super scarring for me, and um, really scared me away from like certain people in my life for a long time, and I was afraid that if I saw the medium then I would have a similar experience and not be able to get over it. Uh, on Mother's Day my mom told me that she was going to see a medium again and asked me if I wanted to go, and since it was Mother's Day I was like, okay. So I went. I don't know if maybe it was all real or all fake or partially real and partially fake. I don't know. I don't know what I believe. So this is what happened. We walk in and in the back of the room is like really dark and I just see a couple people and I'm hoping it's going to be like a really intimate setting so we can like get in and get out. But when we walk in there, the room is like full and we were there for almost three hours. So that wish didn't come true. <laughs> but after we sit down, the medium um, turns the lights completely off and says a prayer. And uh, then she has us like meditate on the idea of like an orb of light in the middle of the room. Um, and has us like connect ourselves to the light and feel roots growing between us and the people around us and has us like say our names into the circle so like the circle can recognize us or something I don't know uh, but we did that also in the middle of the room was like what I can only describe as an altar there was like a circular table with what looked like a giant metal unicorn horn on it um, a statue of an angel and a bunch of rocks I wanted to like investigate further what was going on in the middle of the room but since I was like a total newbie I didn't want to like just walk over there and start touching things and like fuck it all up um, so I didn't do that. So after we were done meditating, she started going around the room and giving readings. Now for most of the people, she said that she saw a particular spiritual entity talking to them, like, usually would end up being a relative, uh, that had passed. These spirits were either comforting or offered guidance or, uh, gave them events that had happened in their lives. I don't know. Uh, it, some of it was really specific and some of it was really vague. So again, I don't know, maybe some of it was real and some of it was fake. Did this lady Google me before I came in? I don't know. I don't know. Some people were really blown away by the stuff they were hearing. Other people were just like, all right, cool, thanks. Um, and I was one of those people. Side note, I have been to like psychics before where I've received a reading and then uh, a friend or acquaintance has gone back and received basically the same reading that I had. So I know that there are some people that like really take advantage of people that believe in this sort of thing and just use like really vague, uh, ideas and then work off your body language or your reaction to what they're saying like oh okay you're really oh okay you're really close with your mother and you're like yeah and they're like oh and you've had a lot of trouble with your father and you're like yeah I have but obviously if you're close with your mom you're not close with your dad so things like that are what have made me skeptical but like I said I really want to believe in this so when she got to me uh, I was really excited to see like what spiritual entity was gonna like talk to me because I don't know that many dead people. I know my brother, a grandmother, and my old dog. That's it. If she had tried to describe any other person talking to me from beyond the veil, I wouldn't have known who it was. She didn't say who was giving her all the info. 
And I said that to my mom and she was like, well, maybe she didn't know, which, okay, maybe, but how come she knew for everybody else but me? The reason I wasn't really into my reading was because it was like kind of vague and she kept insisting um, on me being an actor. Like she was like, do you consider yourself an actor? And I was like, no, yeah, I'm pretty much just chilling. You know, like I don't consider myself an actor, but she was saying like, oh, you've got a big opportunity coming your way and you need to like reach out and grab it because you don't believe in yourself and you need to believe in yourself and believe that you can do it because you can do anything you put your mind to. And I was like, okay, like, thank you, chicken soup for the soul. Like, I can do it, blah, blah, blah. She also said that if I have the chance to be in New York City on December 21st, then I should go. <laughs> Midtown will be a disaster. I don't want to be anywhere near New York around Christmas time. Everyone's crazy around Christmas. I'm not interested. <laughs> But apparently, you know, there's a big opportunity waiting for me there on the 21st of December, so... But then she got to my mom. When she started talking to my mom, she was describing this woman with, like, big legs who had had heart problems, and that's why she died. And my mom was like, okay, I know people in my family with big legs, I know people with heart problems, don't know anyone who had both. And we're just gonna move past that. Um, I'm just gonna tell you what I'm getting because... I just want to be able to give you the information as I'm getting in. My mom was like, okay, cool, whatever. She's talking about how your life is a roller coaster. You know, when your ups are up and your downs are down, you know, it's really, it's really hard to be able to, to be able to live your life fully. And that's what your life is. And my mom was like, yeah, I mean, that's true. But also, isn't that true of everyone who has like emotionally challenging times? You know, I don't know. I don't know. But then um, she said, wait, wait, there's a male spirit coming in now. I don't know if her wording was like coming into the room or like coming like from the void, but she was like, there's a male spirit. My mom was like, <sighs> and she was like, wait, were you hoping to hear from someone today? My mom was like, yeah. And then she was like a male and my mom was like, yeah. And she was like your son. And my mom was like, yeah. You know, she knew that I was there. So in theory, you know, how it works. Probably a daughter and a son happens in a lot of families. That's the standard American equation. Makes sense. But I'm wondering, you know, maybe if I wasn't there, would she have guessed that she was hoping to hear from, an, from like a dead husband? I don't know. So she says, okay, so this is your son. He died young. And I'm like, duh. <laughs> um, but she says, he's, he's calling you mommy. And I was like, oh, great. My heart is breaking because my brother like still called my mom mommy, like even though he was like 21, he never stopped calling her mommy. She kept talking about how he loved race cars. And my mom was like, I don't think, you know, I don't really think about race cars when I think of Brendan. But I was kind of taking it as like, he loved like adrenaline. And my brother was like a total adrenaline junkie. I mean, obviously he died on a motorcycle, but like he was obsessed with riding roller coasters and going fast and, you know, just pushing, pushing, pushing himself to do like crazy stuff all the time. So I was like, kind of like pulled in by this reading. Another thing that really grabbed me was she was talking about, um, she asked my mom, like, do you have any, like, pictures of his hands? Um, you know, like, when you're little, uh, you put, get your hands put in bronze or you do, like, an imprint in paint. And my mom was like, no, not, I can't think of any. And I was like, wait, you know, just a few days ago we were going through our storage unit and I found a hand turkey that my brother had made when he was in elementary school. And I didn't know that that it existed before I found it a couple days ago. So I was like, I just found out that this existed and you just mentioned it. And I never knew about it before now. And it said that he was always around my mom and she should always be able to feel his energy. And like when he died, like two hearts were beating and, and one stopped, but it kept going because of my mom and like all this like really emo stuff. And then she said like, he was really unhappy here and like that's why he had to go. Not saying that like, you know, it was his time or whatever, but he, I mean, my brother did struggle with like really, really severe depression for most of his life. So, I mean, her saying that I was like, Oh damn, like, what if this is true? Like, what if my bro is like standing right next to me talking to my mom about all this stuff, you know? Before it ended, she asked if anyone else in the circle had anything to say, like if they had felt anything or seen anything. And there were a couple of other people in the circle that said like, they could feel an energy near my mother or like they had seen a light near my mother, like before they even knew that she had like lost a son. Maybe, you know, it's like a mob mentality sort of thing. You feel this, so now I feel this, but I, I don't know. I don't know what I believe. And I was talking to my grandfather about this today. Um, my grandfather is a Lutheran pastor. Uh, I went to church like every Sunday until I was like 16. More for like the community aspect as I got older, but it was definitely like a part of my routine. Um, and he was talking to me about this passage in the Bible where uh, Jesus is talking to his disciples before he's about to be crucified. 
and he's saying, you know, like, I'm not going to leave you alone. Like, I'm not just going to abandon you. And they're like, like, what the heck are you talking about? You just told us, like, you're going to die. Like, that's stupid. We hate that. And, uh, you know, what he's alluding to is that, you know, the Holy Spirit is going to be with them. And he is in the Holy Spirit and, you know, Jesus is in God and all that. Three in one, all that stuff. The word that they use in, like, the original scripture in Greek is paraclete. And paraclete ends up translating to, uh, like, comforter. But the direct translation of paraclete is someone who walks alongside. And I really, really love that as a concept. He was also talking about how, you know, there are instances, and it's not like there's, like, you know, solid proof anywhere. There are all these documented uh, occasions where children can see people that, uh, that adults can't see or, you know, they seem to be talking to people that adults can't hear, and that this is something that all children can do, and we grow out of it as we get older. So if that's true, and there are kids that can talk to these spirits, it makes sense that there are some people that just never grew out of it, right? <laughs> I mean, I've definitely had occasions where I felt like I wasn't alone somewhere, like something else was helping me or guiding me. I also brought up the idea in our conversation that like if you're God, right, and you have all these people to look after, you know, on this earth, on like thousands and thousands of other planets, like you're watching over all this shit, you're probably outsourcing, right? You don't have the time, you don't have the energy to go and guide everyone. You're gonna be sending people. You're like angel, angel, angel. Like angels, Autobots, roll out. Uh, if you saw, you know, me struggling as a god, you would probably send someone that knew me to help me, right? Because, like, yeah, you know, that stuff's fresh in this dead entity's brain. I don't know. I don't know what I believe. Anyway, I just wanted to share this, like, weird experience with you. Um, if you've had experiences with, like, psychics or mediums, um, or like you felt like a spirit near you guiding you like please let me know because I'm very very interested in the concept but again you know I don't know what I believe I don't think I have to believe anything it doesn't really matter it doesn't really matter what I believe because I'm gonna find out when I'm dead or I won't either way it doesn't matter now um sorry if this video was weird this is just what's going on in my life uh so I love you uh bye <laughs>